All right, welcome back. So we've seen what we're doing here so far with two-way tables. We're, we're testing for general associations, right? So our hypotheses look like this. Our null is that there is no association. Our alternative is that there is, all right? But depending on how our data was collected, depending on the question that we're answering, there's actually two types of associations we may be interested in, right? One would be we may be interested in independence. That's where I have individuals from a single population and I'm comparing two characteristics or two variables of a single individual. The other would be testing for homogeneity. That's where I have a single variable or single trait that I'm interested in from two different populations. All right, we've already been over the mechanics of these types of tests, okay, but this is a little bit more to think about on the front end. So let's expand on tests of independence here. So let's think about what my sample would look like. Well, it'd be a bunch of individuals from the same population, and we're comparing two variables there. The question we're trying to answer, are these two traits independent? So our null is that they are independent. No association. In this case, the association we're looking for is independence. Right? So they are independent. The alternative right, is they're not independent, or we could say dependent. So what are some examples of that? We'll say I had a, a sample of a bunch of different plants. Right? Their, their type and the size of flower. Right? Say I had a roster or a list of employees at a company and I, I wanted to look at their level of education to see if that dictated their position in the company. Okay, so again, I've got individuals from the same population comparing two variables. So let's revisit an example we saw before about these students, their smoking habits, and their parents' smoking habits. Right? These are two variables that are collected from the same person, right? Maybe they, they asked the students and they said, do you smoke? Do your parents smoke? All right, so uh, doing just a, a general test of association is fine, right? but we're taking it a step further. So... If I did recognize this was a test of independence, my hypothesis would be that students and parents' smoking habits are independent. My alternative would be that they are dependent. All right, so that's a test of independence. So let's expand on tests of homogeneity a little bit here. All right, this is where I'm looking at the same variable from two different populations. Just call them A and B. All right, my question is, are the proportion of people or individuals that fall into each of these categories, do the proportions look the same for both of these populations? All right, so my hypothesis looks something like this. Does the proportion of individuals in population A that fall into category 1 equal to the proportion of individuals in population B that fall into that category? And so forth for all K of our categories. Our alternative is that is going to be that they are not equivalent. So what are some examples of this? Well, maybe if I had a population of males, population of females, right, and I wanted to see their, their level of education. Is there a difference in these two populations and the proportion of people who have postgraduate degrees, undergraduate degrees, associates, high school, whatever? Right? Maybe I have a population of conservatives, a population of liberals, and I wanted to see their views on a specific topic. Here, abortion, something like that. All right, so we have two different populations. We're comparing a single variable over those populations. So let's look at an example here. All right, say you're a health insurance company and you're offering all these different health insurance plans and you take two samples, a sample from a population of hourly workers, you take a sample from a population of salary workers. Right? Then you see which plan did they prefer. So say we've got three plans and we have the data on our salaried workers, hourly workers. So we want to see we're treating salaried workers as one population, hourly workers as the other population, and we want to see do these two populations look to have similar proportions choosing each health insurance plan. So our hypotheses would look like this. 
Hit the null is that the proportion plan choice is the same. The alternative is that they're not the same, or that they're different. Now, I'm not going to focus too much on the, uh, the analysis here. The right? point is we, we've seen in a previous example how to actually carry out this test. Calculate your expected, your contributions, test statistic, p-value, all that stuff. All right? that's, that's not what we want to focus on here. I want to focus on more, okay, this is a test of homogeneity, so how do we interpret that? Large test statistic, small p-value, we reject. All right? So what that's telling us is the proportion or preferences are different. So where are they different? Again, if we reject, we got to follow up with that. Well, we see some large contributions here. I right, see a pretty large contribution here as well. All right, so what that's telling us, we really see our, our big issue seems to be going on over here with plan three. All right, so plan three, very large contribution here. We expected 32 hourly workers. We got 60, so almost double what we expected. All right, so it looks like way more hourly workers are preferring plan, plan three. Right, we expected 68 here. We only got 40 here. All right, so what that tells us that salary workers do not prefer plan three. In fact, it looks like salary workers probably prefer plan plan one a little bit more. There's much less hourly workers than we expected in plan one. All right, so that's our test that's clarifying a test of homogeneity versus a test of independence. They're both tests of association, uh, but we can classify them further. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.